Yep, what's good, original crew, man? We're back, baby. We got another video about that boy, Lou. Hip Hop's worst record deals. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I wonder how he's going to break it down. Like, like people who have record uh, bad record deals or those who have, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I, I love this aspect of it, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I feel like a lot of people go into, you know what I'm saying, not even just hip hop, just into the music industry without the uh, proper knowledge and education or even people in your corner who ha have proper knowledge mm -hmm. of what it takes to be successful in a, uh, in a music business. Yeah. Um, you know what? Oh, boy, I went, the one I went to school with, I think he did right by being able to obtain knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, everything he blew up while we was in school and uh, everything took off for him while we was in school and he became a mega hit maker. Godly. But he became a mega hit maker while we was in school. So I think that helped him with the being surrounded by people with knowledge. Yeah. And then he knew what to look for, you know what I'm saying, as he, as he rose up. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So... Uh, Y'all, I shall see, what was it, last week or the week before last? I showed you a contract, a music, oh. a music contract. Like a it literally. A couple, legit, it was a couple weeks ago. It was a, it's literally a real music. It's, it's a 360 record uh, label deal. It's a contract, 360 mm -hmm. contract. And I, <laughs> the reason why most people get screwed, I said, see, would you literally be able to read this and understand it? And she said, no, I'm not reading that. How many pages was it? Like 40 some pages? Yeah. That was, it was just a lot. And you, you remember I always be telling you, I'm like, yo, it'd be like one line after like the fifth or sixth page that will void. That, that's part yeah. of that deal. That will void out the first six pages. A lot of people, we just, most people are not, that do seek the music industry are not educated behind it. So they don't even know what they sign in most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. So, hey, before we get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. You want to first support. All you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. Let's hop into it, y'all. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's about. Let's get it. Imagine you spend your whole life chasing your dreams, pursuing what you love, and becoming the world's next big thing, just to be exploited and left with little to nothing. Since the beginning of the music industry, major record labels have taken advantage of ambitious young artists, suckering them into contracts disguised as a gateway to fame, but ultimately leaving them short -changed. Rappers have been no exception. The hip-hop industry is often known for taking advantage of numerous young MCs who lack knowledge about money and law, and left them stuck with some really bad contracts. Contracts. My name is Luesta, and these are the worst record deals we've ever seen through hip hop history. Is it bad though? Because most of the, most of the time, when when an artist signs a label deal, uh, by the time they do sign a label deal, it's because they actually need the money to be able to finance their the music their music career, right? Uh -huh. So by by that, it's it's a leverage on both ends. You you might have a song, right? But you have nothing else going for you, right? So the label comes and say, hey, we actually got all the money and resources and access to stuff. So, yeah, two, three, two, three years down the line, when you are of that notoriety and folks are like, man, y'all screwed my boy over like this. They actually put, gave him money before and, and access. So by the time he's able to achieve the access and everything, now, yeah, the, the record deals look horrible. But they when they signed it, they had nothing. You know, that's true. I, I say a lot of people sign uh, deals too prematurely mm -hmm. because I always say develop your brand before you ever go to somebody else to have them develop your brand. True. Like, so you can have leverage. I I always say this about any upcoming artist from the knowledge that I know and been, been around and been able to get the proper education behind it. Develop your brand so you don't need another brand. You know what I'm saying? That's where anything to be real. Always work on your brand so your brand stands out. And I already have a loyal fan base, a loyal, mm -hmm. loyal support system. I've already been in meetings and dealt with distributors and stuff like that. So I know 
But so by the time a record label, you, you don't have really much to offer me. So it's a partnership and it's not me signing a 360 deal where you get a part, portion of this, 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 and this, yeah, and this. Everything you got your hands in. And the real reason why they they have 360 deals now is because music don't sell like it used to. Mm -mm. They're not making... So basically, by the time a label gives you a million dollars for a, a record deal, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all do know artists be charging out at the wazoo for these uh, features, right? Mm -hmm. So that's part of, that's part of the, the million dollars. So you trying to go get a future of Drake and a J. Cole, your budget gone. You yeah. ain't thinking about it. You got to also pay the producers. Mm -hmm. You got to also pay this engineer that's always, uh, uh, anytime you need to go to the studio, you got to pay for studio time. So all that is coming out at, your, at the budget. Yeah. So by the time, this nine times out of 10, this, this album you put out, it ain't going to recoup a million dollars. So by the time it's time for the next next one, we still down that hole for the previous one. Mm -hmm. So now I got to make money off your tour. I got to make money off your merch. I got to make money off everything. They got to recoup somehow. Yeah, I got to get my money back. I ain't finna just, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Y'all don't buy, y'all don't, y'all do not buy music like y'all used to. And it's, unfortunately, it's because of the streaming platforms. The horror stories of artists like Lil Boom, who took a ridiculous $7,500 advance and partially forfeited his rights, might lead you to believe that these atrocities could never happen to the biggest names in the game. However, cases like NBA Youngboy prove that it doesn't matter how many times you're the number one streamed artist on YouTube, and that it makes no difference if you were roped into signing a bad contract to begin with. I'm sure you all know who NBA Youngboy is. The Baton Rouge rapper took the world by storm with his gritty and painfully honest tales of his life in the streets and has refused to let go ever since. He has more than 30 billion total streams and over 100 RIAA certified releases, including three platinum or double platinum albums. But despite his success, he's only received a fraction of the reward, cementing his story as a cautionary tale for artists on the come up. And yet, it's still not even close to the worst one in this video. Once Youngboy rose to the highest peaks of the industry, OGs and media figures started looking at his deal and realizing that he wasn't getting what he was owed, which told them everything they needed to know about how the rap game is run. Why did Atlantic basically tell Youngboy, listen, after 22 albums that you dropped in a, in, in a time period where we only contracted you to do five, we'll negotiate and give you this amount of money, but we ain't giving you a mother part of your masters back. These are real things. What does that mean? When Youngboy started, he's 17, he's 22 now. He don't understand what the f going on. He's just putting out music. Even you look at the guys now, that that's probably big right now with social media. I just seen they had N NBA Youngboy. He's the biggest YouTuber influencer for his music. He did a deal for $2 million for five records. So think about that. You got the money up front. Imagine what they get. We have to teach that to the next generation. Look at the bigger picture. Don't just look at the now. At a certain point, young Bro, all that sounds good until you really understand and know. It all sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. But also, if if it if it if it was that like that, when you think like somebody like Master P would go out here and have his own label and do right by, because you've been in the game so long, you have the resources that could. could but also, you probably would try to rip off other artists too. Same way, it's business, bro. And unfortunately, business ain't never fair. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I put a million dollars in somebody if I'm not gonna make a million dollars out? That's like that's even like the dope game. The dope game is the rap game. Mm -hmm. If I if I go buy a million dollars worth of drugs, I want to be able to say after I sell these million dollars, I, I profit somewhere. Yeah, it's a it's an investment. So technically, the artist is the dope. I'm I gotta get a return on my investment. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about my investment. So, like, when you think about it like that, not not saying that, like, no matter what you want to do in life, you have to study and learn what you want to do in life. There's not a doctor that's go out here and say, hey, I want to be a doctor and just go, and go start practicing yeah. being a doctor. Mm -hmm. They go and get educated. Same way with a lawyer. Same way with any Same, other profession yeah. in the world. You go and learn. It's only when it comes down to the music industry, predominantly the the rap industry, where they don't teach you. And unfortunately, I know people are gonna blame. Me. That's because you know it ain't got nothing to do with that. If you really want to be truly successful in it, you go study, you go educate yourself, you go make sure you have the proper knowledge, or at least surround yourself with people who have the proper knowledge, not just people who have want you to see win. Mm -hmm. Seeing me make it as successful as a rapper is not seeing me win. You know what I'm saying? Me winning 
is being able to financially progress. You know what I'm saying? Me being able to put a, the right account in, in my, on my team. Me getting the correct entertainment lawyer. Understand that an entertainment lawyer is not the same thing as a legal lawyer. Mm-hmm. And also learning, my lawyer should not also be my manager. Because I have seen people yeah, say they, they got that screwed off by having somebody that's a, a, a lawyer. Because yeah, your yeah, manager going to look out for your for themselves. Your lawyer look out for you. You can't intertwine the two. Yeah. But so many people make so many dumb decisions. Or I've seen this one too. Say for instance, they signed into a rapper. The rapper said, "Oh, I got a lawyer for you." Say, "Hell no!" Nah. Mm-hmm. Anytime, anytime, like you sign into another artist and they tell you, "I, oh, I, I got a lawyer for you," I know an entertainment lawyer for you. I immediately say, "Hell no!" Nah. And I really also with that, no, this man, somebody's trying to scam you, because I've seen it plenty of times where they loan you their lawyer. Their lawyer's looking out for them because they the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sad, bro. Young boy woke up, realized how unfair his deal was, and started fighting for his release. Beginning with this simple post on his IG story from July of 2020 that read, I said they can have the next four albums for free. All I want is my masters, and I still got told no. Dirty game. Hell no. Among the top artists on streaming services today, Atlantic Records knew what they had and started getting creative in terms of how they classified his projects just to extend his time there. Atlantic's making a killing off you. But of course, the greatest thing they do is they they only called three of them an album. Now in recording contracts, this is how it works. Young boys drop way more than five projects. Now, why is he dropping those projects? Because that's his way of staying hot. He feeds the streets. He could have got bitchy. If they're not going to count one of these to my album requirement, I'm not dropping. They're going to say, well, nigga, we, we told you only drop once a year. Trapped in a deal that no amount of drops or hits could save that's, him that's from, Youngboy was left only reaping a portion of the prize he deserved. As one of Youngboy's fans put it, people sign shitty deals when they're desperate. Then they blow up and realize just how bad their deal is. Following this, Youngboy continued releasing, but did so while waging a war against Atlantic, with the intention of warning other rappers to avoid doing business with them. Don't sign to Atlantic. If you're an artist, they're not going to support you, especially if you live a certain way. After all that back and forth, it came as no surprise when Youngboy refused the $25 million deal that Atlantic offered him after his previous agreement expired. Beginning with 2023's I Rest My Case, Youngboy has been signed to an alleged multi-million dollar deal with Motown, a place where he seems much happier. Youngboy handled his situation with patience, but there are instances where high profile stars face so much label bullshit that they get burnt out, leaving the mic behind forever. This is the case with former Young Money signee Tyga. And after what happened to him, it's really no surprise that he stayed independent ever since. In his early career, Tyga was on his mixtape grind. After briefly signing to an indie label run by Gym Class Heroes' Travi McCoy, the Cali rapper caught the attention of Lil Wayne and Young Money, the subsidiary that Tunchi ran as part of his deal with Birdman's Cash Money and Republic. After getting the chance to show the public what he could do on tracks like Bedrock and Rack City, Tyga's debut album, Careless World, Rise of the Last King, was a major smash. But even though he should have been flying high, what the young artist didn't know at the time was that he was being screwed over big time on his label. After he decided to leave the label before the release of his fourth album, he was about to realize how much he messed up back then. Because as he prepared to leave Young Money, it would majorly cost him. I'm on a roll with Wayne. He's recording Carter 3, so I'm just in the yeah, sauce right now. Him. We did uh, Bad Rock and it was like, you know, you gotta sign. It's gonna be the single. I was like, all right, cool. So I signed, I didn't even think about it. I didn't think twice. I had a lawyer, wow. but like my lawyer at the time was the same lawyer that was representing Cash Money. Oh. It was already a bad thing from <laughs> Jump. I'm 17, 18, so I don't really know nothing about lawyers. And I'm just like, cool, I'm rocking Wayne. I'm on a bus with him every day. I'm having fun. It's a popularity yes, contest, bro. You with one of the biggest artists of the time. He working on his album. You on you on tour with him. You seeing the glitz glams and you like at such a young age. Such a young age. Mm-hmm. And you like, damn, bro. I'm seeing money I ain't never, never seen before in my life, right? Yeah. And I'm like, damn, bro. I'm having a fun. You know, I'm getting a females that I never thought I. You know and what I'm saying? Like, I want this forever. Like, I this is what I want. And then for me to put you on the album, mm-hmm. I mean on the record, because we all know what Bear Rock did. Mm-hmm. Bear Rock was a smash hit. Yeah, I, and it still it still go off. But uh, facts, facts, facts. for him to even put you on the record, he's like, hey, but you got to sign. You signing? At that time, I think I you think know, any, know. I think at that time, I think anybody signed. Yeah, like young self.
Young, young self. self. I'm saying. I'm saying. Yeah, 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 I know. The bedrock. Speaking about you because you said what I. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, young self. More Lil than Wayne, like, Nikki, like, especially this is something Drake. I've been wanting. Yeah. Like, and I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the same room as. Yeah, I think, yeah, money was on honestly, fire Honestly, I too. think anybody probably would that don't have any type of like for real guidance, true, or, true. you know, to like, because him saying like I had my I had a lawyer, but it was the same people that was representing Cash Money. Technically, like you said, you don't have a lawyer. you don't have a lawyer. Yeah, cause they represent the best interest for for, for the label. Cause I, what what you say? They the money. They the breadwinner. So let me ask you this. Like knowing knowing some of the knowledge I've told you over the years and everything mm-hmm. and stuff from from my if education. I can remember. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. Go ahead. Uh, if somebody came to you at your young, like, just would you sign a, a deal to a rapper? You said no. If I like my young self, no, no. Nah, nah, I'm, my young I'm saying self. knowing the knowledge that not take that take that out. No, no, I, no. I, I I said take that out. What like you the, your young self, take that out. Cause you you said so, what I have sounds. No, no. I, and I said take that part out. Oh. I said knowing that just go off the from the information. No, don't worry about okay, the don't age worry about part. Age. Don't worry about the okay, age part. Okay, to answer your question now. From the knowledge I've to been able your question, to. No, I would not. Never sign to a, to a rap, to an artist. It's the it's the quickest way for you to really get on mm-hmm. because that artist already got a reputation in the back, and especially like somebody like Lil Wayne at that time. The biggest rapper in the world. But like, but one thing that I mean, yeah, because this is something that that you know, or I don't know if this is common sense or if this is just because you have told me. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, you will never be bigger. You'll never be bigger than that artist. Than that artist. And also, you got to realize Wayne was the biggest artist in the world right now. He doesn't really have time to put a lot of effort into you because he's putting that effort, effort into to himself. Myself. Like, I, at the end of the day, that's just, like, say, for instance, I was an artist and I'm signing. And I'm trying to make sure I win. So, I will, like, kind of put you on a back burner. Yeah. Because, like, my career is, is is top priority. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, thinking about it and how it's like, you, like, you can never, like, for real prosper to where you're supposed to be at because... You under somebody else is on the same, do, trying to do the same thing you're trying doing. Trying to do the same thing you're doing. Also, in regards to that, you also signed to Young Money, right? Mm-hmm. People fail to realize Young Money is not a, 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 a like, it's a subsidiary of another label. Yeah, young yeah. Money is under cash money. Mm-hmm. I think, if I can remember, Young Money is under cash money, and cash money is under universal. And I always say, uh, unless you can get, like, like signed right up under, Mm-hmm. A label that's under a major, yeah. I always go with a major label. If a major label like you know, if Universal, uh, Sony, or Warner is not coming to you, do not sign to a label. Why? Too many people got to get a cut, cut of the profit before you mm-hmm. get a cut of the profit. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if I sign directly to Universal, Universal get a cut, then I get my cut. Now they might take a, t- a big chunk change, oh, yeah. But at least it goes. But from, it's be- better than splitting it three, four ways. Yeah. To have a- However many, whoever. Yeah, because a lot of people with. got paid off of off of them young money artists. That's why Birdman's so rich. He was getting paid off them artists along with Lil Wayne. Yeah. Now you got to think about this stuff. It's it's not just a, but that's part of the education part. You got to educate yeah. yourself. So I wasn't really worried about. It. From 2015 onwards, Tyga has dropped music through his independent label, Glass Kings and Empire. For a while, he was flopping hard. Even the assistance of Kanye West as an executive producer on a couple of projects couldn't save him. But with his 2019 project Legendary and its smash single, Taste, Tyga finally mounted a legit comeback, overcoming the odds stacked against him. His momentum stalled again soon after, and following a short spell as an OF creator, he returned in 2023 on a collaboration project with YG. While the track didn't exactly set the world alight, at least he's getting 100% of what he's owed now that he's freed himself from the legal dispute over his first deal. But for someone who was more of a one-hit wonder than expected, failing to live up to your promise can really leave you in a bad spot. When it comes to artists who know that kind of pain, few of them have been as vocal about their misfortunes as Krayshawn. If you're not familiar, Krayshawn was once projected to be a huge star. A young True. white female who brought a unique flavor to the game, Kray caught fire yeah. with early hits like Gucci Gucci and Bumpin' Bumpin' back in 2011. Today, a lot of fans feel that, for better or worse, these tracks were ahead of their time and hinted at the direction music was heading in. 
Imagine if this dropped today. TikTok servers would overload and explode. Courtesy Frags. of Hercules Momentum, the polarizing rapper That's found crazy, himself bro. with a deal from Atlantic. A repeat offender in today's video, and as you'll see, they will only get more and more ruthless. But I'll say this, when it comes down to Atlantic, Atlantic typically uh, likes to, they have, their trajectory of artists. The, if Atlantic come to you, just understand what type of artists they already view as. Atlantic like social media style artists. Mm -hmm. People that they can push towards social media. Like like Bad Baby. She signed Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Like light like NBA Young Boy. It's very uh, dominant when it comes down to YouTube. Yeah. Like Atlantic is quick to go out here and say, hey, who's the next social media? <laughs> who's the next like big impact when it comes down to social media? That artist is who we want to sign. Yeah. Like, understand, like, if you, if you cool with going down that route, then yeah, cool. cool. Take yeah. take that. You know what I'm saying? Some people want to uh, be able to, but you also going to sign a 360 deal, so they also going to get a part of your social media. So, understand the business, man. But if I want to be 100% taken serious as an artist, I'm still going, I want to be directly through one of the three major, mm -hmm. Universal, Warner, Hold on. And Sony. Sony. Yeah, 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 yeah. After she was given a $1 million advance, it would take until September of the following year for her debut album, Something About Cray, to drop. It peaked at number 112 upon release, and the only tracks that made any impact had already been released. It was simply a flop, perhaps one that people should have seen coming. After this short-lived adventure, people swept her aside, and she went largely undiscussed. Today, she has yet to release another project with the label. Since then, Krayshawn has rallied against the contract they put her in, and claimed to have seen almost no money for her most successful tracks. F playing Gucci Gucci, <laughs> F playing Go Hard, that shit don't go to- She's saying, she's saying, don't listen to that. I get paid, I don't get paid don't off get of that. Paid, yeah. And a lot of artists that, you know what I'm saying? Because she's still in debt. Yeah. Because she's still paying back the million dollars that they gave her in advance because her album flopped. So to the, probably to, to that time, I don't know about to this day, but to that time, she still wasn't being able to profit off of her, off her music. Off her music, yeah. Is it because you're in a 360 deal, you still have money that needs to be recruited from the labels. And that's the reason why also people, a lot of people will tell you, uh, stop signing these big, big deals. It's hard to get... Yeah, it sounds good to say, yeah, I signed a deal for this amount of millions. Yeah. It's hard to pay that money back. Like, this chick I went to school with, her first deal, she signed... Matter of fact, she signed to Atlanta, but she also writes. She writes a lot. She's a she's a big ghost writer. Yeah. Uh, but she signed for... She signed 100000 100, Yeah, yeah. 100000 she said, to be honest, after taxes and... and she said, after taxes... Because she had to learn, even though she went to school... She she had to learn and be too. So after taxes, management uh, fee, uh, and everything, I think she said she was left with like like forty fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. After that, to really spend, and she said, then you also got to think about it. I'm a I'm an artist now, so I can't have a regular job. So I also got to cover my cost of living. Right. She like after everything, I'm still broke. Yeah. But now I had to come up. And made my album. Yeah. So she was like, that hundred thousand was for my album. Facts. That's for studio time. That's for engineering. That's for producers. I gotta think of like how I'm gonna be able to pay all them now. Yeah. I have to go back and ask for even more money. Cause a lot of times people ain't thinking like if if they give you a hundred thousand for an album after the taxes, that hundred thousand go goes straight to uh the rest of it goes straight. So if you gotta go work a job, you gotta go work a job. You you're not set. Hundred thousand looks. It sounds good. Yeah, but I'm about to say honestly, like a million will scare me. Like somebody coming to me, like, hey, yeah, like, you know, I got this contract for a million here. You just, just sign. No, like that scares me just to think about it. Yeah, like, with bum with your knowledge now. I think it would like. I think that would just, scare. Like it was. I have more knowledge now, but I. At the end of the day, I think it, I always say people would come to no, no, but as a, as a but, 17, 18 year old, 19 year old that comes from nothing. But I, I, I get that. But a at million the end get, of the day, I know out. that's not free. That's not just, that's. That's what your knowledge now. No. I, I don't well, think okay. people, as okay. a 16, okay. 
as a CC, okay. 17, 18, 19 year old coming from nothing, you don't know about taxes and all this crap. Wait. We didn't know that. See, I'm going to be real. If we I'm come seven, from two different places and two different backgrounds. We come I from think, the same background. No, we do not. And I think I probably would, I would know, like, I know that this money, yes, that you probably have, you have to pay taxes on it. I know that this money is not just here, you, you can have this and. I'm telling and, you, and the average that. person is going to. The average. Okay, okay, well, to at that check, age. Okay, maybe I can't disconnect the fact that yeah. I have the knowledge now, if that makes you feel better. But, yeah. Ask your nephew if he would take it. And I bet you he say yeah. Who? Your nephew. Oh, only got one. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, <laughs> ask your nephew. nephew. And I bet you your, your nephew say, yeah, I will take it. With his mindset. And that's what, that's what I'm saying. That's... Bro. But I'm saying separate you, the. Cause I said separate. I said me. Yeah, yeah, he on a whole yeah. different level. Yeah, the but I'm, I'm saying those are. I'm saying, but that's. I the get what you're saying. That, I that's all I mean. Saying. Gucci, Gucci, <laughs> playing go hard. That shit don't go to my pocket. You don't get any money from that. No. Not any like oh you get a check for a hundred bucks. I literally got a check for a hundred bucks. Literally. Yeah. From and that's what every. Ever. Three four months. months, three, four months. To make matters yeah. worse, Cray Quarter. was only losing three out months. on money, but in turn owes thousands to her label, even as Gucci Gucci reached platinum status in 2023. Crazy that I will owe Sony 800k on one album for 10 plus years. Damn, it's fishy. I know they're eating off me till this day, but platinum still in the same money debt. 10 years? Math, not mathing. Here's more numbers. I swear my debt started at 800k when I saw it 10 years ago, and it has barely changed. Sometimes I even swear it gets higher. In Krayshawn's case, we see what can happen when an advance is never recouped. Oh, they charging interest. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the reason why, and without, without it constantly making a lot of money, you will never be able to recoup it. It's just... Oh, I'm just sitting here thinking. It's like it's a loan. I was just about to say that it's, it's, it's just alone. like because you said my seven eighteen year old. Yeah, my seven eighteen year old would. That's just like going to school and 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 signing off on getting a loan for. I have to. You have to pay. So why you, why you go? Well, why you why you sign these student loans? You still you still can't pay them back. You said I can't. I mean, I don't. not not in a lump sum and get a, get away. We make payments on it. Same thing. That's not, I, I didn't say that you won't be able to pay. I said that I know that I will have to pay back so a million dollars would scare me. That's the only thing I'm saying. That's the only thing I was saying. Y'all show was taking out them student loans when they just said, hey, here go three, four thousand. We was like, she, they say no more. I'm finna go run this and spend it at the stores. Y'all was show going, first, that first check, that refund check, we show going, instead of taking it, a lot of, I know some people would take that refund check and put it back to the student loans. Whatever they got back, they would turn, turn around and put it towards their student loans. But most of us said, she, we young, it's all, it's all good. You know what we went to? To the store and bought clothes. Say you ain't go to the stores about no Levi. Mo mo most of the time. Say you go on those shopping spree. Most of the time with like those, I like put it back into like whatever I needed for like my classes and my housing. But you, you ain't go on no shopping sprees with them chicks? Not those, no. I had other, I had other stuff coming in. You know my situation. She's now stuck trying to free herself from a debt she could never repay. However, not all issues with labels stem from money. For some, creative differences can create even worse predicaments. And for Lupe Fiasco, this was exactly what he dealt with under Atlantic. Contract. Way back in the day, Lupe was just a spitter from Chicago who seemed like he was next up. Renowned for his incredible technical abilities, Lupe made good on that promise with his debut album Food and Liquor and its follow-up The Cool, which gave him the biggest hit ever on the Matthew Santos assisted superstar. Yeah. Uh, a fresh cool young Lou trying to cash his microphone check 212 want to believe my own hype but it's too untrue now that he had given the label a taste of the commercial success he could bring them they wanted all they could squeeze out of him in turn this led to their relationship falling apart and one of the most talented spitters of a generation getting majorly mistreated by his label i once asked but i also say this without the label do we have the record superstar do we have the proper engineering for it to make it sound as good? Are we able to get that uh the dude the dude that's on the hook? If you are, oh, would you without without Atlantic, do you do he get that uh I, I, yeah, that I, feature? Cause they had to pay for the feature too. Yeah. Do you get the producer that produced the record? You know what I'm saying? Do we get the studio, the proper studio time time to even sound, you know what I'm saying? You gotta and, think about all of that when you're thinking about, you know what I'm saying, a record. Yeah. 
Oh, my bad. I was just gonna say nine times out of ten, no, you don't get all of that without that. And that's and why so push. many people are so quick to yeah. sign these deals because they know that they have to they don't have it. So we can't we can't just credit the artists only for making a, a record a smash hit. You gotta also like you say, hey, the label had a lot to do with that too. Cause me, I look at it from both perspectives, just because I have the education and knowledge. So I, I look at I can't demonize the labels. Just because, but they put it because they put a lot of money. They put a lot of resources. Basically, by you signing that contract, you're getting access to that money and those resources that you will never have if you don't sign that deal, though. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason why I say you have to work on your own self. You have to develop. You have to develop a network. You have to develop yourself before you sign to these labels. Because you are like, you know. Most talented spitters of a generation getting majorly mistreated by his label. I once asked Lior for my masters in exchange for signing a 360 deal. And he said, do I want them in a suitcase to carry around? A greatest hit from among all the other wild stuff some of these white record execs have said to me with a straight face in private. Around the time he was crafting his third album, Lasers, the label started putting major pressure on him to get things moving along. The whole relationship was disintegrating because he refused to play ball with their demands. I was also told because you didn't sign this 360 deal, you may or we may or may not push your record. So when Shining Down came out and you didn't hear it on the radio station, it's because they didn't they never took it to a radio station. As things continued to get tense, fans even organized protests outside of their offices to force Atlantic to drop the project. Yet, Atlantic continued to screw him over, even taking the original version of Airplanes and giving it to B.O.B. instead, robbing him of a hit song. Lupe would see continued success with the label, including a number one album and multiple <laughs> projects, but was ultimately forced to sabotage his career to regain his freedom. So you telling me, so basically Atlantic owned the record Airplanes and some it's obviously you know what I'm saying that's why so cause some stuff I don't be knowing you won't hear stories like this unless the artists come back and tell you or okay, unless you in those buildings I gotta get effed over just cause I wanna sign this 360 at the, at the end of the day it's business same, same way you okay, decide to yeah. go out here and say hey <clears throat> You don't want to. You don't want to do business with me. Like we all have the freedom, right to do business how we would like it to be. Yeah, that's cool. I I, I get that. I, I I get that. Yeah, but go ahead. Say what you were saying. Nothing. No, say it. No, no. I knew that there was gonna be some bullshit, so I was like, you know what? I will never, ever, ever, as long as I'm on this label, give this label like my heart, like what I really. If you work with somebody, they have to like show you some love, right? So I took an L. Since 2017's Drogas Light, Lou has been dropping what he wants, and fans can rest assured knowing they'll get the rest of his projects in all their intellectual glory. But he's not the only artist who had to scratch and claw to regain their artistic freedom. In the case of Megan Thee Stallion, she was cheated out of millions before she could call- Now her, I ain't gonna lie, dude, dude behind Megan's situation, he, he was low-key a little low. But that's also an individual who had money but not knowledge about the business and was trying to do anything he could do to control the situation because he had the money. You know what I'm saying? She did what she needs to do as far as y'all had a falling out. In a Megan's situation, I feel like he should have just allowed her to leave. But he tried to finagle some stuff because he was he was the breadwinner when she had nothing. Yeah. And that and that's goes back to it. Quit signing just signing deals just because you are eager. Go work, like go put in a lot of lot more work. Yeah. Like, not just work as an artist, but work as trying to understand the business. All her music her own. Signed to the label 1501, owned by former MLB player Carl Crawford, Megan's early career was regularly stunted by 1501's micromanagement. Before long, her annoyance churned into internet outcry. I wanna tell y'all. That 1501 trying to tell me I can't put out no music. Y'all don't see no music from Megan Thee Stallion? It's because 1501 don't want to drop that music. I know everything that was in that contract. So when I got with Rock Nation, I got management, real management. I got real lawyers. And they was like, do you know that this is in your contract? And I was like, oh, damn. As Megan attracted more fame, she earned a management deal at Rock Nation. 
It was during the legal battle to get her out of her contract that its corrupt elements began to reveal themselves. The lawsuit spells out what Megan considers to be the worst parts of the deal she has with 1501. She says that she got a $10,000 advance when she signed and that the label gets 60% of her recording income. Of the 40%, she still has to pay engineers, mixers, and other artists who featured on her tracks. Megan says they're supposed to give her a statement on what she's owed, but that their accounting has been purposefully and deceptively vague. The suit went on to reveal that Megan has over 1 billion streams and 300 individual track downloads. That translates to around $7 million, while her ex-label has only paid her $15,000. After a lot of back and forth, they finally settled things in 2023, and by October of that year, she announced the launch of her very own Hot Girl Productions, backed by a distribution deal through Warner. Megan's online tirade. A uh, direct. Uh, honestly, that's all you need. All you need is a distribution deal with a major. You are straight for everything else. It might, it might, it's gonna, it's gonna put you in a hold a lot to go out here and get the producers. Get the features because a lot of people be taxing. Now, when people be talking about, I, I get two hundred a feature. I get back in the day. Uh, I remember who was it? Timberland said he do he was a million dollar beat maker. People paying that's a lot of money. Like, come on now. But back in the day, people were able to recoup a million dollars for a record. Mm -hmm. Records don't sell like they used to. Cause people used to have to, especially ringtone era. Mm -hmm. People were buying the ringtone. That's money. That's money. Yeah. Uh, people would buy albums. That was direct money. Like radio play, more people was listening to the radio. Some more advertising play. Now you got YouTube and all this stuff. Advertisements ain't paying like they used to. Yeah. So you know, like. And it, I would definitely rather go this route. Like I understand, like it's more. But. You know, I honestly, out of all these people, I would rather sign a deal like Megan. Mm -hmm. Kind of get screwed over for the long, the short term. Yeah. And maximize the long term. Most definitely. Don't get screwed up. Like, like I you, think you learned. Yeah. And now, yeah. Because also she built a brand mm -hmm. from being screwed over, yeah. and now she can be able to negotiate a bigger, bigger price. Most definitely. Like somebody like NBA Youngboy, I think he gave too much work up for for little or nothing. You know, mm -hmm. after you put out the one or two projects, you, you they as soon and they as they say, you what it, you "Oh, know, those ain't considered albums." Well, like, if I'm only gonna work on albums, I'm not putting out. Not but they profit out. off of every last because yeah. you were part of this 360 deal. So you take them, take it to them, and say, "Hey, I want to put out an album. All right, we, we negotiate the album, the terms of the album. Okay, now I got. I've been working on music. Here go the here go the album. Yeah, I already got it." Here you go. We can go ahead and get get the ball rolling. Like I think I think Young Boy just did it very immaturely mm -hmm. as far as understanding the knowledge of everything. And he could have been out that deal. Yeah. I think I I do think Young Boy has an ego. Mm -hmm. And I think if he kinda had checked his ego a little bit and just kinda hum, humbled himself a little bit and started thinking clearly. But also he he's also talked about he's he's dealing with a lot of stuff too. Mm -hmm. So he's not clear uh clear thinking, but I think he, he was thought of thinking a little more clearly, I th and his thought process was a little bit better. I think he, he doesn't get screwed over as much as he did, because I, I really hate it for him, man. Because he wasted so much music, so yeah. much good music does categorize as mixtapes yeah. and not necessarily albums, and that he wasn't able to properly profit prop, prop, properly profit off of. Because mm -hmm. just think though, Young Boy gave us a lot of his songs. Mm -hmm. Think about if he didn't like if he was able to get on them five albums and go out here and just be independent and get bro that boy be so rich man you talking about filthy rich backed by her massive success landed her a pretty admirable outcome but other artists have had to take much more extreme measures to get their way the story of TLC is a perfect example as they had to resort to gang like methods in order to shake a terrible deal off their backs. One of the most popular girl groups of the 90s, TLC's Chili, t boz and Lisa Left Eye Lopez all signed deals when they were barely in their 20s. What they didn't realize is that their contract with La Face Records gave them a measly 56 cents per album sold, which also had to be split three ways. This comes out at around a two Man. That's why it's not good to be in a group. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's not, it's not, even though it's dope, it's still not good to be a part of a group. You'd rather be a solo artist though. 
per album sold, which also had to be split three ways. This comes out at around $200,000 for every million albums sold. On top of that, TLC received delayed royalty payments and eventually had to file for bankruptcy despite having grossed millions. After staying silent on the matter, TLC finally hit a breaking point. After they swept the Grammys, they explained that they were in a bad spot and how they ended up in it. I'll put it to you this way. We are the biggest selling female group ever. 10 million albums worldwide. We have worked very hard. We have been in this business for five years. And we are broke as broke can be. I, I... You remember they had in a, in, a, in a movie, was it a movie or a show that they did? I think it was a movie. But, um... Remember they had gifted them them cars too, and they were like, "Oh, it was Rav Fours, I think, mm -hmm. Toyota Rav Fours or Jeeps." Maybe. I can't remember. They were That's like, they would turn. They were like, "Oh, we got a ride, dude!" Never take a ride from a from a uh, record label. Yeah. If a record label come to you and say, "Hey, I'm giving you," say, "Nope, no, no, you no thank you." Because you know why? It's not a gift. You're actually paying for it. They charge it to your advance. You have to then in return pay interest on that that car. And pay dollar for dollar. And interest with interest. So everything is not a gift in the music industry. Uh, a lot of stuff is to hook you in, reel you in, make it look good on their behalf. But you have to pay that back. Because that was a part of their contract. Yeah. When they was gifting them cars, they had to pay, that, pay, the, pay for the car. Mm -hmm. But they were complaining about not having transportation to get around. They were like, oh, here we go. We got y'all some. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all hooked us up. No, y'all just complained. So here we go. Yeah. Can't go into this. It's sad, now, bro. But trust me, you can sell 10 million albums and be broke if you have greedy people behind you. Well, you know, contracts and stuff is kind of hard to handle business when you're stuck in um, contracts that say certain things. It didn't take a heated phone call or hiring fiery lawyers. The ladies of TLC took Clive Davis, the head of the label's parent company, and held him hostage to negotiate a better deal. We held the record company hostage with guns, guns with bullets, because TLC had generated $75 million on Crazy Sexy Cool, and they gave us $50,000 a piece. And I was like, what the hell? So of course, Lisa was the ringleader, we had a limo driver, and he was the getaway car. The story immediately made headlines, but even with the insane actions that TLC had to take, young artists continue to fall victim to contracts like these. For example, Anoli Chapa became one of hip hop's biggest hypocrites after the label got to his head. And if you want to hear about that story, you can click the video on the screen. Because mm. I, Anoli Chapa was supposedly have did a independent, mm -hmm. and he was supposed to go. Oh, I forgot the black uh, black brother name. That uh, I forgot his label, but it's like. Uh, he he his 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 joint is is the based off the theory I did for one of my school projects where I was like, uh, I, like it's united united masses basically. Mm. Uh, we had a presentation to do and one guy, he's a rapper and he tried to challenge me on my idea where, yeah. uh, like, my idea was similar to a three sixty deal but not necessarily three sixty deal where you own your masters. But I get a percentage of the sales. Yeah. So basically, I get a percentage, but we'll help back you and pro provide you with distribution and all that. Just say, for instance, I w became a, a big person out to be able to sign people. It was one of those type of projects. And I was like, well, I, I would want the artist to still get uh, still on, on their, their masters, masters, but I, we get a percentage of, of sales that they do. And how long does this percentage of sales last? Long as you sign to like, long as you sign to, but it's it's my my percentage of sales is not like, oh we get fifty percent or sixty percent like a traditional. Yeah. They also were well, with a traditional label. They own your masters. Yeah. They provide you with an advance, but they get a recoup. Yeah. And they get um, uh the major percentage of your of your project. Me, mm -hmm. I just said I wanted like twenty percent of your uh things you sell. For as long as your contract lasts. So we can be able to recoup our pro a product uh, 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 along with an interest. It's, it's a it's a low return. Mm -hmm. But you are able to profit more than I am. Mm -hmm. So basically, whatever we provide you with and whatever we assist you with, we get a, like a 10, 20%. Right. Uh, kind of like a management deal. Yeah, okay. Basically, we get a 10, 20%. Uh, profit return so we can be able to recoup, recoup well, but you get the 80 percent and you do what so you, you still, still on your master yeah and you still on your master so you can do whatever say for instance you sell you, you loan this master out to somebody hey yeah we get 
10, 20 percent, but we just get a little look cut. You get the major cut. Right. That ain't nothing to say. Hey, here y'all go. Get up. Will to to do that. Yeah. Mm. But the 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 rapper dude that was in the class wanted to argue and talk about you will never make money like that. You know. That, and what's so crazy is when we used to do music reactions, he reached out mm. and said, "Hey, do you can you uh I came across your YouTube video and I, I was wondering. I'm like, but he didn't re- remember me. Yeah, I'm like, I remember you. Yeah. I never responded back to him though. Yeah. I think he's still an up and coming struggling struggling rapper. All mm. to be it, but uh, you never know who you might come across, man. You can't shoot down somebody. Yeah. Cause he was in. They were like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna be, he's gonna be." And I'm like, "He was doing all this stuff." But I mean, I think, I think when you think about it, it is, it is, it can be. You can make profit off of it, especially if yeah. you have multiple, like multiple it's artists. Not just yeah, this, you one person, this one person. Like I got multiple artists because most people are going to want to own a master. So of course. Because it's more like a distribution deal yeah, type thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But it's like a label, market as a label, but more a distributor. Because we'll help you get your music out there. We'll help help you bring in your producers, find the producers, help you with all this stuff. Even if, say, for instance, you say, hey, I can't afford this. We're like, all right, we'll put it up, put the money up, just go ahead. But be more transparent with you so, so you can understand what, where your money is going. Because that's where a lot of people that don't understand because they're not being transparent with you, allowing you to know. But I forgot like the full breakdown. I don't have time to do a full breakdown of how it will work. Yeah, I did a full breakdown presentation for, for your, class, yeah. but I can't. We just don't got time to do a full pre- presentation yeah. for that. But. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was child. Okay. Like the video already long enough. Yeah, so maybe one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But hey, it was like... I just say, I always say, educate yourself no matter what industry you're trying to go into. Even if you're trying to go into YouTube, doing streaming, stuff like that, properly educate yourself with what you can you can't do. Uh, YouTube does get a big percentage. Be uh, if, you, if you're not comfortable with that, find another platform to, uh, to do on. There's no negotiating. Yeah. It is set in stone, so you have to know what you're signing up for, no matter what you get yourself into. But yeah. properly do your research before you're going into anything. anything. Yeah, most definitely. But, hey, y'all spam us up, man. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts about it for us in the comment section down below. But until next time, y'all know how it go, man. I do go by the name DJ Nikki. This is. We are. We are.